quasi here. There's a darkness within each and every single one of us. Most have spent their whole lives stuffing it down and have continually run away from it because they're afraid. Others have let it consume them and run their lives, which have led them to doing despicable acts which can only be deemed pure evil. But there's a select few who've been able to confront their darkness and integrate it into the wholeness of their being. And it is this select few who've been able to accomplish their wildest dream and achieve the fulfillment they've always longed for. This darkness is called your shadow self. See, the term shadow was coined by Carl Jung over a hundred years ago, and still to this day, it remains a mystery. Jung believed that there were four main personality archetypes that we all possess. Number one, the persona, which is the self or the mask that we wear in public. Number two, the anima or animus, the opposite sex counterpart of each psyche. So the anima is the feminine counterpart of the male psyche and vice versa. Number three, the self, which is our highest self that is united with God. And finally, the shadow, the deepest, darkest parts of us that we don't want anyone to know about. And in the Red Book, Jung says, he who comprehends the darkness in himself, to him the light is near. He who does not want evil will have no chance to save his soul from hell. As I have delved into this personal development journey, I had to face off with the inner demons that continually kept me stuck. Feelings of insecurity, jealousy, greed, lust, and hatred. And I noticed that every single turning point when I felt stuck for a long time, whether this be in my business or in my relationship, I had to uncover this shadow self and essentially integrate it into my higher self. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to uncover your shadow self and integrate it into your life. Once you are successful in doing this, not only will you experience true inner peace and fulfillment, but you'll also notice that all of your unachieved desires will become effortlessly manifested into physical reality. Let's get started. In order to integrate your shadow into your persona, your unconscious to your conscious, and thereby eliminating all of these unconscious blocks that you feel like you've been experiencing due to past traumas, past patterns, what fundamentally needs to happen is we need to master three main things. There's three main parts to this. First part is understanding fatigue and the three different types of fatigue. The second part is emotional clearing, how to properly deal with these feelings that are surfacing and how most people improperly deal with them. And finally, unpacking patterns in your life. I'm really, really excited for you to experience this. Let's start with number one. What you'll notice in your life is there's basically three main types of fatigue. There is what's known as persona fatigue, which basically means you get tired holding a certain personality. Have you ever felt that you come out of a social situation and you just feel completely drained? It's because the person that you were with, every single person that we're with, we have a particular ego. The ego is like a, like a, it casts a shadow. Depending on the different times in the day, the ego casts a different kind of shadow. Depending on who we hang out with, who we socialize, interact with, our ego or our persona takes on a different form. For example, if you're with your mother, your father, you are one kind of person. If you're with your friends, you're another kind of person. If you're with your husband or wife, you're another kind of person. With every single person, we embody a different persona. Sometimes though, we get this persona fatigue from embodying too many different personas. We want to make sure we eliminate all of these fatigues. That's the most important thing that anyone can do. So the first type of fatigue is persona fatigue. The second kind of fatigue is self-judgment fatigue. Self-judgment fatigue is the fatigue we feel from constantly judging every single step that we take. Has it ever happened to you that you've made a social media post that you want to put out and you're judging what people will think about it? So you keep second guessing yourself at every single turn. Or maybe you've completed an assignment for one of your clients and you're just second guessing yourself like, oh, is this good enough? Is this not? Should I publish this? Should I not? Or even in social situations, you constantly judge what you're saying. And did I say the right thing? Do I look stupid? Do I look silly? And this constant state of self-judgment is causing you to tire yourself out. Essentially, you're basically fighting against an invisible part of you at all times. That is a draining source of, uh, of fatigue. Finally, we have decision-making fatigue. This is when you have too many decisions to make, 
So when you wake up, you're like, oh, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat today? What am I going to do today? I especially find that on unplanned holidays, you know, when you take a vacation and it's unplanned, I get this fatigue a lot because there's so much to do. What are we going to do? And by the end of the day, you're just drained. As opposed to just daily living, I just don't feel drained at all because I know my outfits and I know what I'm going to eat and I know what I'm going to do. There's just no fatigue. It's just there's this there's a routine, a consistent routine. Very, very key people like the president of the US, you know, they have to make so many decisions day to day. If you can minimize all of these fatigues, you will find that slowly your shadow self will naturally arise that you can experience it. If we don't do that, if we're constantly fatigued, we don't have our conscious awareness available for us to explore and experience the shadow side of us. Therefore, we constantly run away and stuff it to the side and we never let the uncomfortable thing come up. We're always compartmentalizing. You might be going through something really tough in your life, but you're just stuffing it up because it's just too difficult, too draining to deal with right now. So the key is, the goal is to eliminate all fatigue. I cannot understate the importance of this. So the question becomes, how do we get rid of self-judgment? How do we stop holding onto a persona? How do we get rid of decision-making fatigue? Well, the decision-making fatigue is very simple to eliminate, but the self-judgment and persona, it's not so much because you've lived your whole life judging yourself, thinking that nothing you do is ever good enough. So if you've experienced that pattern of constantly judging yourself, whether it be in social situations or by yourself, this is where part two comes in, emotional clearing. So what you have to understand is there's four main ways in which we deal with our feelings. The lowest form of dealing with our feelings, which is what causes the shadow side to strengthen and the disjunct between the conscious and the unconscious to grow larger and larger, is repression. We repress our feelings because they're too strong. To deal with right now. Repression is very unconscious. You don't choose to repress. What you choose to do before repression happens is suppression. You suppress. Something really grievous has happened. You've lost a loved one or an event happened in your life. Maybe you got hit with a bunch of taxes or anything could have happened in your past and that made you retreat into your shell and like just stuff it down. You just haven't found a way to deal with it. These strong feelings, therefore you just suppress it and then you try to continue on with your life. A level above that though, is a more powerful, a more energetic way of dealing with our feelings, which is what we do when we express them. We express our feelings. Now in expression, there is more energy available. You talk to a therapist, you talk to a confidant, you talk to a friend, you explain how you're feeling, that's great. The issue though, is with expression, although you release a certain amount of that energy and you feel better, the remaining energy gets suppressed and therefore afterwards repressed, just naturally. When you feel angry, you might think, okay, I'm going to express my anger, I'm gonna punch something. What we do is we perpetuate that anger. When we become angry and we react from a place of anger, we hurt someone else who then becomes angry. If your boss is angry at you, that anger translates to you, you go home and take it out on your wife and kids. This is a cycle that keeps going on. Instead of unleashing our anger into the world, what if we learned to deal with it a better way? And that better way is what's known as surrender. Surrender is a method that was very largely put forward by a man known as David R. Hawkins. And he has this great book called Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. And in that book, he talks about this very simple method to clearing your emotions. And this is the highest way in which we can deal with our feelings and actually have them arise and clear up. And the method is simply, whatever's coming up, we fully accept it and acknowledge it. If I feel like I'm judging myself, instead of fighting that, because now what's gonna happen is you're gonna learn about this and be like, self-judgment is bad. Do not self-judge. You're gonna resist the resistance itself, which creates a deeper battle. What needs to happen instead is an acceptance of what's happening, a full acceptance of what's happening. Oh, there is self-judgment. I acknowledge it. I notice it. This is the internal dialogue that needs to happen. Oh, I'm judging myself again. Oh, I'm overthinking again. That's okay. Just allow yourself permission to grieve. It's okay to take some time out, be with yourself and grieve. There's nothing wrong with that. Society tells you, oh, you have to put up a brave face and be someone you're not. Bullshit. Now, do you have to stop and sit down to do that? No, you don't. You just have to have an awareness that this feeling is arising and that's okay. After you get to that point, you can continue on with your life. There is nothing wrong with that. The key is to deal with whatever feelings coming up in a healthy way. We want to make our unconscious conscious. Now, there is a big misunderstanding that people have 
when we think about letting feelings arise. They think, okay, now I gotta go find all of my negative feelings because I'm gonna do the surrender method on it. I'm gonna surrender it. That's not how it works. The mind is a tricky, tricky matter because whatever we're looking for, we're gonna find. If we're looking for limiting beliefs, guess what? You're gonna find a million and one different limiting beliefs. If you're looking for reasons why you're damaged, you're going to find reasons why you're damaged. If you're looking to find reasons why you're not damaged, you're healthy, you're perfect, you're also gonna find that. The mind works in multiplication and division not in addition and subtraction. You can't subtract something from the mind. It will only divide. What we have to do instead is pursue the thing that we want in our lives. Whatever goal it is, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. That's why I say life is, it's a game. It's trying to wake you up to a higher truth, a higher consciousness. And all of these challenges that they ha- that happen to us, they're all unique to us. I'm going through my own journey, not your journey, not your parents' journey. I'm going through my own journey. As I go through this journey, I face challenges and obstacles. These challenges and obstacles, the external ones that we face, are actually a reflection of our internal challenges. They're a reflection of our internal world. And when we face those, most people, what they do is, okay, let's go fix the problem out there. No, and you can't fix the problem out there. The problem out there won't be fixed. That's a symptom. It's like putting on a Band-Aid. You put on a Band-Aid when there's you know, a hemorrhage happening internally, nothing's gonna happen. You have to go to the root cause of the problem, which is the internal. So whenever you notice a problem outside, ask, what is it internally? What idea am I holding on to internally that's causing this? What am I refusing to surrender, refusing to let go of that's causing this? This brings me to point number three unpacking patterns. So a week ago, I actually wrote a tweet which goes, most people never achieve what they want because they constantly lie to themselves about what they truly want. Never lie to yourself. Why I made that tweet is because what I noticed was we are told by our environment what we should want. Your society, your parents, people around you, social conditioning tells us what we should want. So the mind is susceptible to that but the heart wants something else. The heart knows what it wants. So when I understood this, I realized that this is a pattern that people see in their lives because we become very, very mind-centric. We're always thinking about, okay, I want to do this. I really want to pursue my art, but is there money in it? Will I make money from it? And society is always trying to tell you, go for the thing that makes money because otherwise you won't be safe, you won't be secure, etc. I'll be honest with you. When I started making these videos, I had no idea how I was gonna make money. I did it because I love it. The money question was a secondary thing in my mind, not the primary thing. When you do what you love and you could do something for free for the rest of your life because you truly enjoy it, you can find a way to monetize it later. The man who loves the journey will walk farther than the man who loves the destination. When I understood that, okay, there's things that we think we want versus what we truly want. That means intellectually, we're convinced by arguments, logic, and societal conditioning to want certain things. But emotionally, that thing, that core desire that each and every single one of us has doesn't change. What got me even deeper into this was I had a client from two or three years ago. She just felt stuck in her life for a very long time. And we finally realized why she felt stuck. She felt stuck because she had a false idea. She thought that she had to somehow make money by helping other people. When in reality, what she wanted to do was just be free, experience freedom in her life and paint, do the thing that she loves every single day. So I advised her, why don't you just do that? To which she said, well, don't I have to help others somehow? Why do you have to help others? Well, don't you have to be selfless? Who who said that? What is selflessness? I inquire to think about that. What is selflessness? Selflessness itself is selfish because when I do something selfless, I'm actually being selfish because I'm trying to gratify something within me. Mother Teresa was the most selfish person on earth because she was giving so that she felt good about giving. So there is nothing inherently selfless. What simply people mean by being selfless and being of service is expand the boundaries of yourself. If my boundaries of myself are just me, I'm going to fend for myself. If my boundaries for myself increase to my family, I'm going to do what's best for my family. If my boundaries for myself increase to my country, I'm going to do the best for my country and You know, I don't care what happens to any other countries. If my boundaries for myself increase to the whole of humanity, I'm going to do what's best for humanity because what's best for humanity is what's best for me. Instead of lying to ourselves, which is what we do is we constantly lie to ourselves because of false ideas that we've picked up. Ask yourself what you truly want. Satisfy that first. Fill up your cup so, so much that it overflows 
and fills up the cups of others. Because if you don't take care of yourself, it's like that oxygen mask analogy. You have to put on your oxygen mask first before you put on your child's. And that's the key I want you to take away from this is people are constantly lying to themselves based on ideas that they've heard. The only way to speak the truth to yourself is when you listen to your heart. When you ask yourself, what do I truly want? What would make my life a continual vacation? If you find that you've been stuck in a pattern for really, for a really long time, all you have to do is ask yourself one simple question. What lies am I telling myself that's keeping me stuck? Or what am I holding on to here that's keeping me stuck? That's it. Just inquire on that question because the quality of your life is proportionate to the quality of questions that you ask yourself. Become very brutally honest with yourself. One way in which I like to do this is through a method that I actually realized that I was doing for a long time, but I realized this through reading David Goggins' book. And in it, he says that every single morning, he has this morning meeting with himself. You have morning meetings with your team, employees, your employers, but do you have a morning meeting with yourself where you just take inventory of how you feel? How are you feeling today? Are you okay? Do you feel good? Do you not feel okay? Something's wrong, something's up. Get an inventory of how you feel. That's all you need, the current state of being. And this morning meeting can be as simple as spending 10 minutes silently, quietly asking yourself these questions, just in quiet reflection, not getting distracted by something. I like to do this by a 15 minute meditation every single morning. I just sit quietly, observe my breathing, and just watch the breath. The natural breathing that occurs, simply just watch the in-breath and the out-breath. And what I've noticed is, as I've done this more and more, I've been able to connect to the heart more and be more honest with myself. Because you want certain things in your life, but you're holding on to certain ideas that's blocking you from experiencing that. What if you could give up those ideas? What if those ideas didn't guilt you down, make you feel guilty? What if they didn't make you feel ashamed of yourself? I'm sure most of your ideas aren't to harm other people. As long as it's not harming another human being, why not pursue your wildest dream? Why not give up that false idea you've been holding on to? And when you learn to do this, you'll notice just spending more time with yourself in reflection, your unconscious side will speak. What's the unconscious? It's the heart. The heart will, you'll start to hear the murmurs of the heart. It's muffled now because you've been listening to the mind for so long. But if you spend more quiet time doing these morning meetings with yourself, walking out in nature, just being quiet, not being distracted by anything that's happening, just listening to yourself and reflecting, you'll notice your true desires will come to the surface. And when your true desires come to the surface, if you have the courage to yield to it, follow it, you'll achieve literally anything that you want in your life. But unfortunately for most people, they don't know what they truly want. They lack true clarity. So what I've gone and done is created a playlist of the four different pillars that we use for our paid clients and our reality mastery program, completely free for you to access on YouTube. That's gonna take these teachings Deeper, the four pillars that you need to master are awareness, clarity, creation, and coordination. I share with you exactly what they are. If you, you can just click right here to access it, and I'll see you in this playlist right now. Thanks.